Today we are going to speak about user base. I said privacy first, open source, serverless, most importantly, just create uh, for JavaScript. And as you can see, there is also a link to BitLy um, to see directly those slides if you have problems in visualizing them. So let's see a lot of different super popular websites. They have only one thing in common altogether. And usually this is uh, Google. And then this is obviously Amazon and even Reddit. So what do they have in common? Apparently they are all different. So one is a search engine, another one is a marketplace and another one <clears throat> is a community website. What they really have in common is something that most of us always need, which is a login uh, sign up system. So what you usually call it as a single sign up system or more importantly, how to manage uh, your users. The, the real challenge uh, about this is not just getting a users logged in because there are uh, many other solutions uh, out there. No? So there is OAuth 2, SAML, uh, OpenID, and many other standards. So but usually uh, I assume that see the vast majority of you are front-end developers and every time someone say okay let's add some authentication to the system then uh, i see even my colleagues uh, being a bit scared about because they say okay now you have to support different authentication system a lot of uh, redirect urls and it's going to be extremely complex to integrate and if we want to add more protocols and uh, we have to write more and more code especially for uh, uh, single page applications or more in general with applications that are um, going toward the, the serverless uh, frameworks. So I feel your pain because uh, I'm not a front end engineer, uh, but, uh, but I have a lot of experience in, in DevOps and uh, backend and architecture. So um, me and um, my other colleagues at Userbase, we decided to make it extremely simple to, to deal with those things for, um, from a user perspective. And the user for us is the developer. So as I say, my front-end experience is <laughs> near to zero uh, because I'm a cloud architect and DevOps. I use Linux and Windows, so I'm clearly not a front-end developer because I don't use Mac. <laughs> and I love Go and uh, especially also Python. Uh, but I feel really at home here because as you can see in the code of conduct of this conference, uh, outside of the presentation, we should uh, only speak about uh, Python related topics, which is nice because we are, we are at a front end uh, conference. So obviously it's a, it's a typo, but um, it really feels like we are uh, the same community of developer. It doesn't really matter if the kind of front end, the important thing is to deliver a good value for, uh, for our users. So every time we want to set up a new website, usually at least what happens to me is that the developers, the front-end engineers start asking to me, okay, I would like to have an SSO for sure because it's gonna be very nice for, uh, for our users, but I want, <laughs> I want it to be extremely simple to use, uh, very secure. So as we are seeing in the other track this morning, also there, there are all the yeah, CSV compliance and uh, there is the GDPR um, compliance, which is also very complex. Uh, and uh, as a front-end engineer, uh, usually you don't want to deal with a uh, backend uh, or even hand-to-hand -end connection. So you have to set up your own uh, backend or ask other engineers to create uh, an API for you, which is, uh, usually requires more than one people. So everyone is asking for simplicity. So our main focus was to make everything extremely simple from a front-end developer perspective. Uh, and let's, let's prove up the whole idea about user base. So it's not just about GDPR compliance, but obviously there is even a CCPA. The idea is that, um, the 
data of the users are a liability. So if, and, and the only problem usually is only when an attacker is going to get your data because of some either mistake, misconfiguration, or because you are very attractive for, uh, for your audience, and even then for attackers, um, there is a lot of risk of losing customers' data. Uh, and also co being compliant with GDPR it is extremely complex. I did that for, uh, for some uh, large uh, corporates and it's really honestly complex, especially um, if you're only taking care about the application side, uh, it's, it's really complex. And it's also complex to manage all the uh, unknowing stuff like password resets, login, logout uh, properly, uh, when you change the password, how to look at the users and, and keep it smooth, or it's really repetitive. And usually you end up doing that for many different websites every time, which is a bit of annoying. The other thing is that uh, a lot of um, website works in the way that you store the data of the users on a database, which is shared with anyone else. So if an attacker eventually will get the, the data from the database, it's basically able to see every other uh, information from other users. And securing that is extremely uh, hard. So our idea was completely different. It was a, a bit more toward um, what happens with hand-to-hand uh, uh, -end encryption like uh, WhatsApp to, to give you a clear example. Where you have um, you have uh, everything that is only you have one or multiple database every user, and th that is encrypted with the user encryption key. So even who is storing the backend, so in this case either us or who is running the software as a, on their own infrastructure, doesn't have access uh, to the user information by design which is very different to say it doesn't have access because we don't allow them to do that. It's really impossible to, so, to see the user's data. So for us, the user data are like liability. Existing software is extremely complicated when available to be deployed, especially if you are a front-end engineer, but in general, even if you are an experienced back-end engineer or, or DevOps, uh, those software are really hard to configure. You usually need a cluster. Uh, you have you need to use Kubernetes quite well. Uh, you have to update it uh, very often, and it's really hard to deploy. Um, there are not that many open source projects to do this. Just a few. Some of them are using GPL uh, license or similar. That is totally fine and interesting, but is not suitable for a lot of uh, uh, corporation who want to use it for professional use. So everyone basically made its own custom solution uh, and could also land in having uh, some other uh, issues like uh, uh, scalability or, uh, or resource creation. So what we did was to completely open source both the front end and the back end to make this system uh, and, uh, and let you run your own. So we made it everything obvious. <laughs> so this one is not clear anymore. It's clearly uh, super obvious. So we try to have the front-end engineer in our mind all the time, and we created a super, super small set of APIs. So this is the entire documentation of user base. There is a init function, then there is sign up, sign in, sign out, forgot password, update user, delete user, and then out on a database, insert item, update, delete, and put, that's it, put the transaction. Because our um, database is, uh, is completely transactional. And then you have a, an admin API, which is very recent, where you can get uh, a username, uh, get user information and also store some private information for the user. So the idea was to really have a set of few endpoints that you can even remember completely. 
and they fit in your mind so you don't have to look around in the documentation all the time. Uh, the idea is that if you either subscribe or run it on your own, you can have an unlimited number of users. So there are a lot of solutions out there where you can have a proper a single signal system, but you pay based on the number of users. So this starts to be extremely expensive. Or you start paying for the number of databases available. So again, it's extremely expensive. In our case, uh, no, you can run your own and it scales uh, <laughs> better than linearly in the number of users. So it really costs nothing uh, to run your own or there is a, um, a flat plan if you use ours. So let's really deep dive because even if we only have um, a total of, of about 40 minutes, uh, I, I'm able to basically show you the entire API of the system it will be very quick just because it's so simple to use that we, it fits an entire presentation. So the idea is you include some JS and you know how to do much better than me. So obviously we also have um, some NPL, uh, NPM packages. Then you register a new application in the backend or you can deploy your own backend uh, by looking at our GitHub repo. So you just include this JS and then you start using it. So you initialize the uh, user base object, which is a sub object of a window. So you have window.userbase. You will fill in with an app uh, ID, which is something uh, you get once you, you set up a new account. And then uh, if the, you're already logged in, you immediately get a user session. Otherwise you have to sign up new users. How can you sign up your users? Calling user by sign up, passing username and password, and that's it. We create a user in the backend. The nice thing is that, as you can see, there is anything about calling an external API or calling a REST API or a graph API or whatever it is. It's just an SDK in JavaScript. You call it user by sign up, and we do everything else. Now, how it works, because I said it is end-to-end -end encrypted. So when a user sign up, uh, we generate a random seed uh, directly in the browser. So we use some uh, new interesting feature about web, web crypto. Um, so we generate this seed in, in the browser, and then we associate a publicly and private key pair to, to this seed. Then we use the, the seed to generate an encryption key. And basically, uh, we are able either to avoid storing it anywhere, or we can um, store a copy, but they can encrypt it uh, in our backend. So it's up to the developer. And there are many options in the SignUp uh, API that you can pick. So the client uh, sent us the plain text uh, public key and everything else is encrypted end to end. So no way to uh, gather data from the user. How do you sign in? So every user that is getting the page, um, you can implement a method to let it sign in. And you call user page sign in with the username and password. And this will automatically regenerate the API token and will fetch the, the data from, from the database. Also, there is a nice way to uh, retrieve the password in some cases uh, because everything is uh, encrypted with this seed. Basically, you can only retrieve the password if you still have at least one session open in one of your clients. Otherwise, it's really, if you lost your key, you lost your key. There is nothing you can do about that. Um, but if you store those key uh, somewhere, either on your PC or you still have an open uh, session that is being saved maybe on local storage or whatever you like, then you are still able to recover your, uh, your password. Basically, we give you um, temporary new uh, new password, and then you're able to reset it again. Uh, then, as I said, you can create as many databases as you want. So you can imagine 
having a single page applications or let's assume, I don't know how many of you um, know uh, some tools like uh, Basecamp or Trello. Those are a perfect example of uh, eventual usage of user base because you can create a, a database that let's assume is a database of your projects. Okay, so you could create a database that is named projects and then uh, every database has associated a change engine, a change handler function. What does it mean? This is the most interesting feature of user base, I think, because every time there is an update on your database, it automatically notifies all the clients connected um, about the change and gives you an array of items uh, of all the items that have been changed. So you can create a completely synchronized web application really in a few lines of code. And then I'm, we are gonna show you something uh, in a second. You can also insert item in your database, obviously. And there is um, an admin interface as well. So those are uh, users that have a public profile and also a private profile. So you can eventually store uh, some information as an admin, like if a user paid for a subscription, because we are adding more and more features. We just added the integration uh, to Stripe. So you can say if a user already uh, paid uh, its plan or something like that. So you can create very quickly a kind of a marketplace around your other application really with no uh, backend at all. Um, this is, so if you don't trust me, trust, trust the data. Um, this is what we, we are really able to see if you deploy user base on your AWS account. Uh, we use that DynamoDB and as you can see, uh, you can only see the name or uh, of the admin of your application because for an admin, let's assume is one JavaScript developer is an admin. So it's a kind of creator of other end users. Um, then we see a password dash and uh, at the bottom of this um, page, you can see this edit item, edit item thing. And uh, this is an item on a database about the database, we don't know anything. There is just a string that is uh, uh, database ID. Then there is a, a key and a record, but those key and records are both directly encrypted with the user key. So there is no way even for the uh, backend holder to get any kind of data out of the database of the user. This is extremely useful for security reason, obviously, but also I say for liability and for GDPR compliance, you are automatically compliant, by the way. You just have to declare that you store the email of the, uh, of the users for password recovery, if you want to activate that, and that's it. You don't have any other user data out there, which is sometimes I think it could be strange, but it's extremely powerful. So let's look at a live session because I love to, to risk uh, something that is not going to work anymore. Uh, let me know if you, okay. Uh, just give me a second, let me just, I'm trying to arrange the window and here we go. And then there is also another window out there. Okay, here we go. So now I'm going to log in as a user. I know this is a super silly application. Indeed, we call that uh, the ugly to-do list. And then I am going to sign in with the same user on the other browser. And the nice thing is that I can type 
and immediately I notify all the other connected clients. Now you say, okay, this is pretty easy. You open a WebSocket, you will have a backend that does many things. And the reply is not. It's much, much, much simpler than, than Sue because the, this entire application, so this application with all the notification, you can see here, I can even remove something and then it's immediately removed over there, is just in total 180 lines of HTML and pure JavaScript. So you import the GS, then this is the alt view like uh, for login. This is the sitemap form. And because you know this, this is the to-do list. Okay. And now to add a to-do. So those are just HTML forms, plain HTML forms. Now here is the magic. So we initialize user base. And then as soon as the user is, the, the application is initialized, if the user is already logged in, it immediately gets um, the database of the user and is able to show its own to-dos, which is really, really nice and uh, extremely efficient because as soon as the user opens the web page, it is, it is immediately getting the data. So as soon as the a uh, user page is uh, initialized. Then you call uh, show to do's and here is the function show to do's. Will give you, so given the username, it will give you all the to do of that user. How that it works, so apart from the fact that here we are display, displaying the to do's, what we do is opening a database, the database is named to-dos, and every time anything changes in the to-dos, we call the change handler. And that's pretty much it. So every time something happens, we call uh, the, the change handler. So it's, um, it's automatically um, called every time anything changes and notifies all the different clients. So, this is the change enter function. So every time there is a change, we load the database and we add um, the to do to the to do list. It's pretty much it. So really a total, <laughs> completely synchronized um, system with login and logout, uh, user authentication, privacy protected, and just. 122 lines of code, which I think is really is really interesting. And also, I, I was a bit impressed, honestly, when I started working with um with user base uh, as a as a DevOps engineer. I would say, okay, I'm able to use that even if I'm not a super skilled front end developer. So I can imagine how can be nice for someone. That, that is really strong at it because they will be much more productive. So <clears throat> everything is, uh, is in our official uh, repository, which is a user base and also works with a lot of different um, frameworks. If you take a look at our uh, repository, you will see how everything works because this is the entire system also divided as backend and, uh, and front end. So um, those are the deploy scripts to deploy everything on your own instance of AWS. So you don't have to use the SaaS version if you don't want to. Um, then here, uh, I personally wrote all the Cypress tests to so the the end-to-end -end, uh, test of this suite. And then here you have the server side written in Node.js, the client side, obviously the library, and then a proof of concept application. Then there are a couple of other uh, repository 
uh, behind encrypted dev where you can basically uh, see some uh, sample application. So in this case, we have something that is working already with Stripe and Netlify, the Browserify, TypeScript, Webpack, and many, many others. There are already quite a few applications in production using uh, our, our tool. So to sum it up, we have an SSO single signing system with an admin panel that is extremely easy to use. Then we have end-to-end -end encryption everywhere. Really infinite scalability. So it's going to be uh, really, it scales massively because it, it's all built around DynamoDB and um, Daniel Vassallo, uh, the, the founder of UserBase, has been working for AWS in seven years. And uh, I'm also super experienced in AWS. So we take an extreme look about scalability. So you can really scale to terabytes and terabytes of data with no issue, probably even petabytes, but we didn't test that. <laughs> and uh, also in the number of users is, is unlimited. Then you have real-time sync across database. The important thing is that the user is logged in. Everything is open source and you can also use it uh, either in promise or uh, as a software as a service. So if you want to know a bit more, you can look at our website, userbase.com uh, or directly contact me uh, for any kind of question like, uh, on Twitter, I usually reply very, very often, or take a look at my articles about more about the language uh, on Medium. But a lot more things are going to be uh, written very soon, even about user base. And if you want to be to have a, a bit more context on the founder, this is Daniel that I was mentioning uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, he worked for, for Amazon and also wrote this book, uh, The Good Part of AWS, that is being pretty successful. And I think it's an interesting read uh, also for uh, for the engineers. This is obviously another big contributor of the project, Justin Berman. And then uh, uh, there, is, uh, there is myself. So uh, I think if there is still because there is still some time, uh, I will dig a bit uh, about the, um, the second up procedure. Otherwise, maybe even better, I don't know how it works because we change software on the fly. Uh, if there are questions, and I'm sure there are questions, just uh, think about those questions and, uh, and let me know uh, via chat because I can probably reply to them. Uh, in the meantime, we just show you oops, the entire API that is over there. Otherwise, thank you everyone. But uh, I'm waiting for your question, Brigitte. 